Hello Primarchs, Joe here. Thank you for tuning in. If you're here, you're obviously here for the Tau Tactica and how to fight the annoying Eldar. Now Eldar have always, always had a bonus in GW's eyes. It's always come out and I like to call it the GW mistakes. As you can see in the early codexes, um, they always get like a certain thing. But Eldar always seems to get all the mistakes in one basket. And the mistakes they've made, because this edition is actually pretty balanced. And the only thing that's making it imbalanced is all these minuses and pluses that hit. It makes a big difference because if you're an army that hits on fives or sixes and, or sorry, fives or fours, having a minus one or minus two makes a big difference. That's hitting on sixes or a minus three that's hitting on sevens. It's a very, very annoying. And no other army seems to really have too much of this. Now, the early editions, like I said, Chaos got this, uh, Eldar got it, and as it's going into the other editions and all the new codes you see, you see it's very, very rarely being given out. Maybe one unit might have it, uh, but it's a lot more rare than the Eldar that has like so many different. They have lightning reflexes, they have the craft world that can choose it to give them minus one, they have uh, vector engines that can give them minus one, they have a whole bunch of little shenanigans that they can go out there, which is annoying. But we're not here to discuss the annoyance we're here to discuss how to beat it now this is a tau how to beat uh video and even if i teach you this it's going to take a lot of a lot of experience and learning your army to beat that army and it's not going to be a guarantee but i'm going to give you the tools that can give you a fighting chance um with that being said if you're a member of ours if you are if you want to become a patron there is a link up there for you to join up if you are you can not just get the tau tactica i can personally give you some hands-on experience on other armies maybe you play space marines or maybe you play chaos or maybe you play sisters of battle whatever i will help you and give you different strategies towards that army but watching this video still will give you a bit of a bonus of what you're up against so without further ado uh let's talk about it so this is a list that i'm talking about is one of the top uh lists that won in an lvo and as you know, the LVO this year was dominated by Eldar. And that doesn't mean Eldar is broken by any means or like an unstoppable like in how they were in 7th and 6th edition where they were a lot more stronger. They can still be beaten and their people have already countered the meta by making different lists to beat them. But the average person playing against those lists that aren't designed to beat those lists the Eldar can be the point where you want to pull your hair out. The point where you're sitting there going, this is a stupid game, I don't understand this game. And I get that. I really do have the frustration because no one wants to play something that's so completely unbalanced. So let's talk what makes Eldar first. Before we get into how to beat them, let's talk about why they're so strong. So one, they have psychic powers, which are amazing. Having psychic abilities and being a Tau player and having none is always a weakness. But to, Eldar has the advantage to give minuses to a unit. They can, with their conceal ability, they can give you a minus one to hit at one unit, which is really annoying. I wish we had that. Um, two, they have the smite abilities, which smite still gets really annoying to do damage. And three, they have to give the ability to give plus one armor saves, reroll hits, um, reroll wounds. All these are nasty, nasty, nasty. Two, they have an extremely wide variety of shooting, and their Dark Reapers are nasty, nasty little guys. Always hitting on threes, no matter what they do. These guys can do backflips, jump off cliffs, or you can go swimming. No matter what they're doing, they're hitting on threes, apparently, which I don't understand how they decided to make that rule, uh, but that's the rule they gave them. They also have little shenanigans they can do, like like a Fire and Fade kind of ability where they can shoot and go hide after, or something like that. It's, it's a lot of annoyance. Um, so shooting, it gets better. It doesn't even stop there. Three, they have extreme mobility. This army is fast. Like, I mean, it's all over the table in no time. Kind of like, it, well, not as bad as it was with the jet bikes going and turbo boosting all, but pretty much still the same with some of the jet bikes, turbo boosting, go all over. Their infantry is fast. Everything is fast. Did I say it's fast? It's fast. Uh, four, they are also very decent in their units for choices of hand. Like, swooping hawks, useful. Howling Banshees, useful. Dark Reapers have already stated, like their whole quality of troops are useful. Even their Guardians have the abilities to fire, and on a six, they do a massive AP hit. What were, like, okay. Anyways, we're not going to talk again why they, GW, I really think GW just sits there and pests their Dark Eldar book, or their, not their, their Eldar book all day. So let's talk about how to beat this. And first of all, 
When playing Tau, you're probably outranged. Dark Reaper spam has 48 inches, and the list that I went against, it has a good chunk of Dark Reapers. It has uh, Farseer, Spirit Seer, a Warlock, um, the Cat Lady is usually there. Um, what else they got? They always take at least one large squad of Guardians. They do this for a purpose. The Guardians are not there as a assault force. They're there as a ability to block and denial zone. If you watch their videos on how to stop uh, area denial, how to deny your opponents from getting alpha strikes on you, they use that long blob of guardians to make it so you can't deep strike on their lines and making it so they can protect their key units. Very important. Um, also, they have wave serpents, and these things, wave serpents are so annoying. Let's make them even better like they always are. So wave serpents have the ability to absorb one damage when they're damaged. So if you do two damage to them, they take one, meaning annoying. Um, also, they, they have other shenanigans they can do. But the main purpose they're using these for is not for like total killing, it's to protect their units from alpha strikes. So they keep their chunks of forces in these transports. Because let's face it, you can hide your uh, Dark Reapers in these, they can get out, even though they're firing heavy weapons, they still hit on three. So why not protect your Dark Reapers? And they have like usually a squad of eight to 10 of these little Dark Reapers hiding, plus a Fire Seer, the Guardian, they're all hidden. So you can't kill them first turn very easily. It's very difficult. They also usually run Rangers, and Rangers also are used as another control and denial unit. They can sometimes target characters, but they're not taking it, they can't sometimes, they can always target characters, but they're taking it for a different purpose. They're taking them again for control. They're pushing you back and keeping their units in positions. Um, so, how do you deal with this already? Why do they have these choices? One, they're choosing the Farseer for the psychic abilities. Two, they got... Um, they need to get cheap HQs, and the Warlock is very useful, and the Spirit Seer casts the same uh, things as the Ruins of Battle. It means two cheap casters to cast psychic powers. Plus, they have an Autarch, always an Autarch, on a bike with a Howling Banshee mask, which is so annoying, because you're playing Tau, that's going to ignore your Overwatch fire against that model, which means if he charges your broadsides, it's a bad day for your broadsides, because now they can't support fire, especially if you're a Tau Sep, and you know how you want to fire your fives. So how do you combat this? Let's start with combating 101. First of all, your deployment is going to be important. And we're going to say hypothetically, again, if you're, uh, there's all kinds of different deployments and I can't tell you and go into the video of every single deployment, but let's say you're playing Dawn of War. So you're 12 up, they're 12 up, 24 inch gap in between. I've already stated this before, your broadside and your bubble. You're playing these guys, you're going to go blows to blows. As simple as that. You're playing against Eldar, it's blows to blows. So first of all, your hub is going to go here. You're going to deploy your power base centralized so those Dark Reapers can't have an advantage of outranging you. No matter where they go, you're going to be able to shoot them. Even if they put them in the corners, by range, you'll catch them. Maybe you have to move a tiny little bit, but I doubt it because they're not, they're not going to usually cluster like that. Now, unfortunately, you're still going to have a hard time because they're going to take that stupid craft world thing. If you're over 12 inches, you're going to need a plus one to hit them. Um, that's annoying. So automatically, you need fives. So how do you combat this? First of all, you need to crack open those how those wave serpents got to go. They have to do. There's two different ways of doing this. Um, one is a sacrificial lamb. And two is pretty much a sacrificial lamb, but a different choice. So one, you can take a commander, a cold star commander, put him on the board. Now again, this is not this is not going to be guaranteed first turn, but if you don't put your cold star commander on the board, they're going to use those guardians to spread them out, and they're going to be you're going to be too far back. You have an 18 inch gun, you get to be nine inches away from the guardians, and the guy's going to be far enough back. Your fusion guns cannot hurt that wave servant. So if you get first turn. Doesn't matter, you can't deep strike down and shoot anything because you're not gonna be able to shoot them. It's just common sense how they're gonna do it. The Cold Star Commander is the only choice for this because he can move over 40 inches in a turn, making it very impressive. And I've learned, I've changed. I always did uh, ATS systems and my things, but I'm realizing there's so many flying things out there and the keyword always has to be fly. I add velocity tracker to all my suits now. So I give the Cold Star Commander uh, velocity tracker and three fusion guns. Make him a little cheaper, but now if he charges that wave serpent and he shoots it, he's hitting on twos, my, like he's technically hitting on ones, but you can't hit on ones. But if they do any Eldar shenanigans, keep in mind, you've now, we'll just use this old school broadside as a commander. I uh, get over here. I gotta stand up. My arms aren't long as I want them to be. So this is their wave serpent. This is more visual. This is their wave serpent. You come in there, you get nice and close, like to hug it. 
Now, there's a couple purposes. Of this. One, you're in that 12 inch range, so you have no minuses to hit. If he did get first turn and he did do an Elder Shan again where he gets uh, he gets a minus one to hit because he advanced, you don't care now because you get a plus one because of the velocity tracker because it flies. So you're hitting on twos. Now, if you advance, you're hitting on threes. Big deal. Threes is still pretty good if you get one mark of light on it. If you get lucky, now you're hitting on threes, re-rolling. There's even ways to go that if your friend always plays Eldar, you can always make that a Warlord and sacrifice your Warlord to go up there and die. But if there's a Warlord trait where if he advances, he just still hits on twos. So now you're hitting on twos. Keep in mind, you still would have hit on uh, twos even if you advanced because of Velocity Tracker if he didn't do Elder Shenanigans. So that's another thing. So you got first turn, he hasn't moved yet. Whoosh, you advance up, you're right beside him. There's nothing you can do about it. I don't care what he is. No matter what, you're going to get in nine inches. He doesn't have that much of a blob. You're coming in, you're going to do your fusion rule. You get 2d6, keep your highest. Chances are you're going to hit with three guns, and you're going to blow the living crap out of that. Now, this is going to be lost. Oh, well. You've done your job. Yes, you've lost a commander, but he's only about 160 points around there, maybe a tiny bit more. But you've killed the wave serpent, and whatever is in that now has to truck across the board. If it's banshees, have fun. They're fast, but they're still going to have they take the two turns to get out there. If they're anything else, if they're freaking dark reapers, light them up. Fire everything you got. So that's one. That is how you deal. The second one is if your opponent's not totally experienced, and this is an uh, easier way to do it too. Not an easier way. That's the easiest way. But a way if your opponent's not totally smart yet, he will get better because everyone that watches his videos or learns or is playing, if they don't use that Guardian spam and they have a window, I like to use uh, three crisis suits to come down, to deep strike down, and you've got to get in 18 inches. That's all you got to do. Again, I give these guys... Two fusions each and a velocity tracker. So yes, I'll be in the 12 inch bubble, so I won't get a plus one. If he hasn't moved, there's no big deal. And I'm gonna hit, normally on fours, go to threes for my fusion guns, I'm gonna crack that open. With three of those firing, that's six guns. Math, with if you get one marker light on, you're probably gonna get at least six hits. And the wounding purposes aren't that hard. It's a three to wound. Um, let's say you get four coming through, and you don't get to reroll a second, you might not cripple it. You might not cripple it, but you have enough extra firepower. Maybe dump a broadside shot at something. Something that's just small to open it up. Again, that's dealing with the wave serpents. That's how you deal with wave serpents. Two, how do you deal with their casting abilities? You can't. You can't stop their casting. You don't have uh, Tau anti-psychic abilities, which I don't know why they couldn't give us something like that. Because we know the ethereals are psychic, but that's another topic. So how do you stop this? If you're worried about smite, the good news is... Crew are always here to save the day. They're always willing to jump in front of that smite because they have to smite the closest unit, which means you're bubble wrapped with, because you're playing Eldar, you know you're bubble wrapped. You're just gonna, that's what you wanna do. If they're gonna charge you, they're gonna charge crew. If they're gonna have to charge you, they're gonna have to shoot those crew to get them off them or smite those crew. Again, crew. How do you keep your crew alive? They don't, but you can cast, uh, or casting, it's not, it's a, the ethereal gives a stone buff, gives them feel no pain. So now you can even get a chance to survive those smites. Are you going to probably survive one in six? If you do, it'll you know it'll make your opponent upset when you save two crew when he does a d3 uh, and only does two things. It can happen. Now, they also hate smiting them because it's a waste to them, and they might not cast it, and they just might not do it. If they do it, they kill kill crew. Who cares? Big deal. You have at least thirty crew in a good army because you should have at least thirty crew. There's your thing. That is your anti smike. They can only buff one unit to reroll their hits. They can't do two. They can't cast the same psychic ability twice. They can only doom one of your units. Then they can only freaking uh, give a minus one to be hit on one of their units. These are things that you're going to have to overcome, but they can still be beaten. How do you do that? Rerolls. Reroll, 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 reroll. Shadow Sun is your warlord. They cannot target Shadow Sun until he, they've got through. Because he's a character, they can't target him until they get to the crew, until they get to the bare bones and all to the meat, and they finally get to Shadow Sun. Shadow Sun will decay on twice, giving all your guys stupid amount of rerolls. You're bubbled because that's how you're going to fight. And you're going to fight dirty because they're Eldar and they're dirty and they're GW favorite guys. And we're going to do whatever we do. We're going to claw their eyes out. So we're going to fire everything we got here. So I don't care if I need sixes. 
we're gonna kill it. Now, keep in mind, that's only one unit that's gonna get it. So you don't have to dump everything. If he gives his Dark Reapers one unit, he doesn't want you to kill him, just because it's got eight in it or 10 in it, he's like, he buffs it, don't waste your firepower on it. He's now used that stratagem, kill the five man groups, wipe them out, and we'll get back to those next turn. You keep wasting your command points, we got command points coming, because we're not wasting them for those things. So boom, boom. Your firepower is now being used. If you can't do anything, unfortunately, to kill that Autar. So no matter what, he is going to get in at some point. He's going to come in, he's going to charge. Or the Howling Banshees. And Howling Banshees, I will always usually deal with the first. And I'm not really worried about Howling Banshees because they're not really epic against anything that's got a higher toughness. Like you could charge your Riptide up and he'll tie them up indefinitely. He just, they're not going to do anything to a Riptide. Um, the Autar purpose is to get these guys. He wants to stop your broadsides from shooting their overwatch fire. So again, bubble wrap. I don't care if you got to sacrifice the entire crew organization, the entire genocide, the entire division to protect my broadsides. I'm willing to do that. You can take good handfuls of crew and you're, plant, you're always playing Eldar. Don't be afraid to take uh, 14, 15, 20 man crew squads and laugh because that 20 man squad costs you 100 points and it's going to be a deterrent that's going to be surrounding your friends and he's going to have to kill them all because he charges he has to open the gap so you start shooting you know you start killing ones that are protecting over here let them charge your riptide go ahead but don't let them get your broadsides and he they've got to kill if you have 20 models they got to kill 20 crew before and then even if they kill those and the guys come in, you still got your little shield drone so a shield drone can absorb a hit for a crew if you really don't want to lose your last three crew Throw in some shield drones just to make sure you, he doesn't break that bubble, which means if he wants to charge, go ahead, charge a crew. There you go. Big deal. Welcome to the team. You killed some crew. Now I'm going to blow the hell out of you because you only got your altars coming in. Your shining spears are going to do nothing because I have so much overwatch fire. I'm going to just say hello to them with constant missiles and they're going to die because I'm Tau and I'm going to hit on fives from overwatch because a Tau step is the way to go because hit on fives. So that's how you deal with those hard target shenanigans you can beat those minus ones by getting in a close range once you break your opponent's back if you can kill those dark reapers and you have to survive and again your shield drones are your friends because the shield drones are going to absorb you have to survive for a few turns long enough to survive to weather their storm and there's they don't have a stupid amount of models they have only a few models to deal with their things they got their reapers and they're only small units they're like an x-arch which is only a strength four attack. He's going to use those mostly on your shield drones or try to clear out some of your crew. It's unfortunate, but it's going to happen. Um, again, the more you can weather down those firepower, so your shooting guys should be dealing with Reapers as fast as you can, but I told you what to deal with first. You've got to kill the things. Don't worry about the fire seeker. Don't worry about it. You're not going to be doing anything about that. You just can't target because of character rule. You'll get there eventually. But by dropping that Cold Star Commander or your Crisis Suits, made them priority targets to your elder player and he's got to kill those because they're now and then which might buy you a turn where those guys are dealing with that and not the things they should be because you see what i'm getting so that is the first tau how to deal with eldar shenanigans those are some quick tip tactics i obviously can't go in every detail but i want to start this one up so if you have any other questions on how to fight that by all means and again keep in mind sometimes their psychic powers are going to fail and when they do and that ghost helm can only be used once for per round, you're gonna have the fun of blowing things up. I mean, like I said, rerolls. You got your, if you have this guy and he's overcharged, he's 18 shots, and they're over 12 inches, because they are, you're gonna need fives. And if they're um, you know, he uses a ward on, they're gonna need sixes. So I already declared fire, so I'm gonna fire. But that's fine. Even needing sixes and re-rolls, roll 18 dice, I'm probably gonna get four or five. I'm going to wound easy because they're only a little squishy little Eldar. I'm going to wound him on twos. You know, he, yes, he will get a good save, but I always take ATS and velocity track with these guys. So minus two, let's say they get a four plus save. They're going to lose two or three little squishy bastards. That's fine with me because that's cool. That's less firepower coming back in. They have no soap. Those squads are all gravy, which means any one of those guys you kill is a bonus. It's like a de five-man Devastator squad with no extra Marines in it. They just, you kill them, they die. So you gotta waste, even if it's a six. Now that's, that psychic power is wasted, the next unit's five. So let's say you have a unit of broadsides back here. Don't waste your broadside fire. Broadsides can kill two of those squads per turn. Two five-man squads of Reapers 
will be owned to a three-man missile squad if you have your smart missiles in range. They're just not going to survive. I don't care what they're going to have. 48 shots, hitting on uh, say they hit on fives because you've already wasted that one thing because you want to target the big one first so he uses his buffs to protect it and this one kills the little ones. He now he still gets the fives to hit, but I'm telling you, with fives re-rolling and rolling like 48 shots and really easy to wound because you're going to command and control mode these guys, so they're going to have to re-roll their wounds, you're going to do at least... 20, 25 plus wounds when it comes down to it. And you need to do 15 wounds when you have your enough AP on it, we're gonna lose. I always keep my big squad of uh, broadsides with ATS to kill armored targets. I usually take sometimes one or two additional broadsides lately just to have the velocity tracker on them so I can target anything that has the fly key rule. Like the bikes have fly rule, the wave serpents fly rule, uh, as you get what I'm saying, if you have that plus one to hit, it makes a big difference. So Velocity Tracker is a two points. Two points. Yes, you have to have the signature. He can hold two. So quite frankly, give him ATS, give him Velocity Tracker. Your additional broadsides you take, give them Velocity Tracker. Keep your one guys just to be your hard hitting guys to be the plus one AP. Because I'm telling you, a two plus AP and Smart Missiles being AP one is annoying. Eldar with their two plus shenanigans and cover will go to... Uh, a three. Now you can use your before the suit shoots. You can use that um, thing to ignore their cover save, so they don't get the plus one for the cover. But they can still, if he did bonus them and gave him plus one armor save, conceal. So now they have technically a two plus save, but you're knocking two off. You're killing them on fours because the four plus armor save is fifty percent, which means you do ten wounds, you're killing five. That's what I mean. Two squads dead to this Reaper squad. This is my Reaper squad, and it's gonna own two Dark Reaper squads a turn, because I'm gonna keep those guys alive for at least two turns to do their damage, and everything else is gonna think. Like I said, he comes with those Banshees, don't be afraid to assault with your Riptide after you shoot. Go ahead. He can't, they can't, they won't kill it. There's no way they can kill it, especially if you have your three plus invulnerable save, your two plus armor save, or we all have a two plus because they're power weapons, but they're only strength three. Ooh, big deal. Plus one for their weapons for four. They're not going to do nothing. They're gonna, you're going to tie them up. So I hope this video helps. If you want to see more how to beat Elder Shenanigans or another list, uh, just put it in the comments. I'm more than happy to make it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please subscribe.